I'm 13 Disciple, and this is Coach's Corner. Well, welcome back, everybody. Uh, today we are looking at a replay from our friend Sigmund Fraud on Serene Coast. Excellent name, by the way. Loving it. We'll start by checking out the team lineup. Okay, we can see that we're top tier AMX 30, and we are facing a two-tier matchup here. Um... There's only one artillery, so that opens up the map pretty reasonably. We have an assault tank destroyer, a campy tank destroyer, and kind of one that can play either role. We have some quicker mediums, with uh, the Lorraine being an especially big threat. The Sent 7 1 is our counterpart. And then we have three tier 9 heavies that are on the slow side, uh, if we're being totally honest. For tier 8s, we've gotten a meal, a good haul down tank. The low is also a good haul down tank, as is the T32. So we've got, uh, <laughs> this could be a tough lineup. So let's uh, let's take a look at the map and make some uh, predictions here. All right, so for the red team, um, I would expect their super heavies, their E75, and their motion to probably do one of these. Head that way is the quickest way to the action. If they go this way, it's a really long time before they can influence the battle. And they have this kind of exposed crossing right here. As for the Yag Tiger, I also expect him as an Assault TD to head this way. Um, the RHM, I would expect to either camp back here in this area, possibly in these trees, and sometimes in these trees. The prototype, I expect to be in one of those similar locations as well. Now the Conqueror is going to be uh, kind of the, the mixed bag here. The Conqueror could really ideally play both sides of this map. He can go that way. And he's quick enough to make a pretty good difference over here, especially with his hull down. Um, I fully expect most of those tier 8 heavies to also work their way over here. Definitely the Emil, uh, possibly the Low, and the T32 would be a pretty likely candidate. Apart from that, I expect all the mediums, or a vast majority of them, to be working in this area here. The more unarmored ones may be sitting back here, and the ones with good gun depression and, and speed may be up here. Definitely the Sense 7 one will probably be working up in this area on that hill. So where would I go on this? So I'm in a top tier medium that is extremely mobile, has decent view range, and has really good DPM for its tier. So what I would probably do is head straight up into this area, this, this one line brawl, and I would brawl in this area here. I would do my best to keep distance from my allies to prevent artillery from stunning them as well as me. I would expect them to be shooting me because I am the high value target in that area. Um, and then depending on what the red team sends this way, I have mobility, so I can leave very quickly. Um, it can be a little bit of a risky move to leave, so you want to get that information early, which is nice to have the mobility of the AMX-30. So if you see their conch coming this way, it's time to probably GTFO, um, because if we notice our friend here is not rocking any premium rounds. A bold choice, I might say. So if that's the case, I don't want to stick around if I'm going to try and brawl a Conqueror, an E75, a Moishin. The scent I might be able to handle if I can get good shots on his uh, commander's hatch. Apart from that, I'm probably going to leave if either of those three tanks show up on the one line. Okay, so that's kind of where I see this match going for me. Let's uh, Let's get it rolling here. So if any of you are interested in having your replay featured on Coach's Corner, in the description will be a link to my Discord, and in there is a channel called Coach's Corner. Uh, submit your replay there with a little blurb about uh, about the replay, kind of what your thoughts were on it, and uh, what I'm looking for is your most average gameplay. If you're too good at it, uh, I won't have any notes for you. And if it's too bad, it's just going to be ultra short, and I still won't have very many notes for you. So. Anyways, so something I want to point out here, your, your, your guys are looking really strong on this flank here. So we have, between this T50 and you, his clip alpha plus your DPM could dominate this hill right here. Regardless of what they send over here, even if that Lorraine ends up popping up, you also have the clip alpha of Richetto, you also have the clip alpha of an AMX 5100. 
what these three tanks need is for you to be their uh, their in between reloads, so you can help them. You also have this T forty four behind you, coming this way as well. So this is looking like a really good, very strong flank right now. I see your T fifty is maybe not me stuttering up. Mm, I see you taking a more cautious position. Looks like you're going to use this bush right here that uh, sometimes snipers will use. Alright, there you go. You got a crossing shot the Lorraine. That was a bad dip of the shell. You've got the Udez, your Progetto, your Skoda stop too. Progetto and 5100 are headed towards the Udez. Lorraine's a one shot. He's now backing off. He's probably on reload, so I'd be pushing in right now probably. Your Amex 5100 and your Progetto are going to need help between their reloads. Okay, their Udez is almost gone. That's huge. So your 5100 clipped out a tier 8. That's helpful. Well, they've gotten a meal and their T32 coming up and the Sent 71. Your Skoda's not over there. You're not over there. Your T44 is already almost dead. Your Progetto's almost already dead. Your 5100's on reload, so he's trying to get out of there. That was a lucky pen. I think that scattered high. That Emil is going to probably kill the Progetto. These are not good trades we're having here. Maybe get a shot there. Yeah, so let's talk about this really quick because this is this is a bit of a bummer. You guys had such good potential on this flank and it seems like it was uh, kind of squandered. So we lost two tier eights, right? The Progetto and the, uh, the T-44. And we've killed one of their tier 8s, but pretty much everything else over here is healthy. Your 5100 is about to die. And your Skoda makes this move down in here, which is probably not ideal. Because he's going to get isolated out. So you can't push into this area safely until you have control of C1. Because these guys can literally just turn around and isolate and kill whoever is trying to poke up in this middle here. So that can be a problem. So, so far we're really on the back foot. And I think maybe had you been up here, um, spotting this Emil coming in, you could have damaged the T32 as he was coming in. Um, the Amex 5100 wouldn't have had to spend all of his shells to clip out the Udez perhaps. And you might still have a couple of tier eight guns still in the game if you were in there, because your presence would make the Sent 71 and the Emil hesitate on poking up. Um, just by you being there. Also, the T-50 is not making a, a very wise play by going into the middle of the map here. So right now, the best option for your team is to get out. These guys need to get out if they can. The Skoda needs to get out if they can. You probably need to get out if you can. And you guys need to set up a defensive perimeter in this area with maybe uh, somebody spotting anybody headed this way. But right now, it's it's looking kind of rough. So far, you've made good vehicle to vehicle trades, but your team has made really bad vehicle to objective trades. So you're definitely on the back foot right now. Your even 90 is going to struggle to do anything against the tanks in front of it. The 5100 got pegged trying to leave from the LHMTV in the middle of the map where the Skoda is. So the Skoda spotted him. You should have shots on him right now, maybe if you back up. No, there's a ridge in the way. He's on the other side now anyways. So you might have had a shot earlier. Okay, so exactly what I just said is, is actually happening right now. So these guys have realized this Skoda is isolated. They realize that they own this area. So what they're going to do is they're going to come down here and kill this isolated Skoda for sure. So what do we do with that information? We have two options. We can either try and go to where the Skoda is, which means we get isolated with the Skoda. Alternatively, you could push up here. That's pretty dangerous because there's still opposing tanks over here. So if you're trying to protect the Skoda, which you don't really have good lines of fire, your best option might be to come back around this area and just overwatch him from behind him if you can. But that still doesn't give you very good control of this map location. So you should definitely, at the very least, where you're at, try and get damage on the guys that are going this way as they move in. Still got a reasonable brawl going on on the peninsula in the 8-9 uh, line. I see your even 90 is going to support the Skoda. Both of those are clipped. 
tanks. So once they're out of ammo, they're completely vulnerable. The Sent 7 one is okay. So this is what I probably would do right now, absolutely, without a doubt. You know the Emil is damaged, he's definitely not full health, and you could probably brawl him pretty easily because even if he gets a clip of damage into you, that's all he's going to do. So I would probably go up to C1, take this map control, and get shots going this way as long as the Emil isn't putting pressure on me anymore to try and give these guys a fighting chance. That's immediately what I would be doing right now. And so you're trying to get shots. These guys are pegging. Okay, so you're getting the... Even better, the Emil has left, okay? You have complete control of this area. If you pop up here and just start getting shots in this angle, you could do a lot of damage. We know this Lorraine is a one-shot. It looks like we just missed the Emil, but he's basically a two-shot if we high roll, three if we don't, right? And these guys need to just try and get out if they can, but I don't think they're going to. These guys are going to dive on them too quickly. And that's another two tanks that are isolated. Okay, you did get him. So that's another two-shot Emil there. Sorry, did my math wrong. Now he's a two-shot. That T-32 is coming in, and I don't think your Skoda is loaded. So we're about to lose a tier 9 medium for nothing. The Lorraine is down there. He's a one-shot. I see you trying to move in to get, get some help. I mean, those guys have made bad choices, but you have to try and support as best as you can and take advantage of their death rows. Yeah, that even 90 is either going to get out or die, and he's definitely going to die. Okay, so what's what's happening now? Um, we've lost everybody on our flank, but we haven't lost any hit points. Okay, so I don't mean to, to sound like a broken I've done this so many times so many times so what we have on this entire flank is a classic case just an absolutely classic case of just being too passive right we've allowed all of these tanks up in here and then again all of these tanks down in here to lose all of their HP and we have done 1500 damage right if you're up in this area even if you still only did 1500 damage and took damage, so that's not good vehicle to vehicle trades. However, if you kept any of your mediums alive, that would be better vehicle to objective trades because you'd have more guns active in the game. Your presence might have backed them off. They might have helped spread the hit points around. So now you by yourself, even if you make good vehicle trades, you'll almost never be able to take all these hit points out, right? It's going to be a really tough ask. Your even 90 taking down the Lorraine is huge for your team right now. That still leaves a T32 who's going to make, take two shots. The, the LH, like, there's just a lot that, that your team is asking from you now, and it's just going to be almost impossible to achieve. So you can either fall back to the one line um, where you were before, but that's still going to put you in kind of a weird crossfire. So actually, if you did fall back to the one line here, you would still have pretty good shots. And for them to approach you from either side, they would be exposed to this Kanon and Jagdpanzer, which might be enough DPM to hold them at bay. It's doubtful. I would still be looking to probably retreat this way or get on the top of the hill and control the engagements because your DPM is going to be your best friend right now and your mobility. So you have to choose one of those two areas and just get moving to it. Okay, so this is the more, I would say, risky maneuver, but it could pay off. Heading up to the hill now, a little late, but you know, better late than never, I suppose. So now you're gonna be able to get um, rear angle shots on all those tanks that are going in. You don't have the greatest accuracy, so this these might be tough shots to hit. You should be further forward. So, Instead of way back here, what you should probably have done is either knock this tree down and try and work this bush to get the shots out here, right? You want to be able to spot, and if you can't spot, you want to be able to shoot whatever's traveling this way because you're going to get at least two or three shots of damage before they realize they have to turn around. That guy is already a little too deep, and your Kanona Jagdpanzer is probably going to die very quickly. You were too slow at supporting him. T32 is what I'd be looking at. That was a good hit. I'd still be, I'd look at the scent now. The scent is a higher value target than the Udez and he's very low on health. 
I wouldn't have spent my shot on the Udez, I would have gone for the scent. Now the Emil is the priority target, he's a one shot. Looks like he might be coming up after you. The LHMTV has isolated your artillery and your Kanonen, they're both gonna die. So yet again, we're still at full hit points. We've hung out almost every tank on our team to dry. We've gotten a lot of damage for it. I mean, we got 2k damage that has not resulted in any damage taken. But as a result, we don't have enough guns in the game. You've sacrificed your teammates for your damage. Bravo to you. <laughs> I don't blame you. I've done this. I have played so many two passive matches. It takes a lot of experience in the macro positioning to know when you should be aggressive and when you need to be passive. So I see you're loading HE potentially for the M53. Um, I don't, can you pen the, you might be able to pen him. The M53 can be a little, a uh, little bit of an iffy pen if you don't have high pen HE. What I'd be doing right now, so let's, let's pause it and take a, take a look at this mini map real quick. Okay. So you have four tanks on the enemy team. We know the scent is close to a one shot. We know the Emil is a one shot. This game is 100% still winnable, if only just. So what I would be looking to do is get over towards this peninsula as quickly as possible and helping with these heavies down here, okay? If you can keep your VK alive, your T2065 alive, and especially your Wizzy 111 GFT, if you can keep these tanks alive, by helping turn these guys turrets, just being in this location will force them to move. It'll take the pressure off the VK and the T26, and you might be able to isolate these tanks and kill them, okay? But you have to do that before these tanks down here can get on cap and or push through, okay? You have to make this move very, very quickly. We're looking for shots. At this point, I wouldn't be trying to peg shots. I want to be spotted. I want for their team to turn around. We already lost our E5. The VK is a one shot. The Wizzy is close to death. Ignore the artillery. He's not a valuable target right now because he's not going to be impacting the match all that much. What you needed to do was to get spotted so that you take their attention away from your heavies. If you turn one or two of those guns, those tanks over there live a little bit longer. And if those guns are active for a little bit longer, you might still be able to win the game. Yeah, see, we're too slow. We don't have shots. We don't have angles. I would still be pushing in to try and save that WZ-111 GFT. Although it's extremely unlikely at this point. Oh, man, artillery just drilled him. And he got hit by the scent from behind, who is, I want to know, a one-shot. That was an unlucky accuracy roll. So, um, whoops, hit the map button there. So just want to point out, all of our team is dead but we still have full hit points. This is pretty common in sniping tank destroyers like an STRV or something of that nature, but it shouldn't be common in a jack of all trades type of medium that you have here. If you get to the end of the match and you haven't spent hit points to save allies, and it's in like this sort of 1v7 scenario that you've got going on, um, you've probably played too passively. So. I would say in terms of your initial positioning over here at F1, uh, I would take that position if I'm bottom tier in a 10-9 matchup, okay? If it's a 10-9-8 matchup, then I would probably still play a little more aggressively um, because that's a very passive spot that doesn't even give you shots all the way to the left on the, on the C1 area. You might be able to kill that Yag Tiger. You hit the lower plate. Oh, I see you went for the machine gun part, but you won't pen that very easily if you don't have uh, good accuracy on it. So we took 510, but we didn't hit either of those two shots pen. Oh, we got obliterated on that one. Okay. Um, I probably would have not driven up over the Yag Tiger. If you had stayed down here and maybe just tried to shoot his lower plate, you might have lived a half a, a half a second longer. You might have gotten maybe one one more shot of damage in. Um, but I mean, if we just take stock right now, the Motion is a one shot, the Yag is a two shot, the Scent is a one shot, the Emil is a one shot. That's four tanks, right? 
that you could have made the difference against or you could have helped your teammate teammates live a little bit longer to make the difference against. I would say with a little bit more aggressive play, you definitely could have won this game. This is definitely a game that could have been uh, a winnable match. I mean, there are still some full health tanks left on the board, but for the most part, I think it definitely could have been a win. And that is a spectacular end screen. Look at that explosion. Go out in a blaze of glory, I guess. But you got to see, you just spent every single hit point you had for two more opportunities of damage on the approaching Yag Tiger, and you didn't even pen a single one. So holding your hit points for so long didn't really result in a win, and it didn't even result in better um, damage. If you had played out here, you might have been able to work this ridge line a, a little better and been safer, because um, you can hide behind the trees and the rocks, and they're going to be slow in moving through this area or moving through this area. So just a little macro position change. Um, if I ended up in this position, this is probably where I would have gone or I would have tried to retreat a little bit quicker. So anyways, overall, I really appreciate you sending this in. I haven't had um, a match where I could show a play that was just a, a little too passive. So Sigmund Fraud, I really appreciate you sending this in, guys. Um, take notes if you can. It is entirely possible to be way too aggressive in this tank because it is so mobile. But what you need to do is use that mobility to get early spots. So if we noticed, we got a little extra damage there. If you had gotten up into this area and saw some of the really scary tanks approaching this way, you definitely could have bailed pretty early and still gotten one or one to three shots in this area still, right? Because you have such a mobile tank. So you can still do the hit and run tactics that this tank is really good for um, and still get out safely. So anyway, Sigmund, thank you so much for sending in this replay and uh, we will catch you on the next Coach's Corner. Thanks, guys.